Today's episode is all about how to stop this from happening. To switch the kitchen lights on. Kitchen lights are unavailable. To switch the kitchen lights on. Kitchen lights are unavailable. Switch the kitchen lights on. Kitchen lights. There are three possible solutions to this problem, and thankfully none of them involve hitting her over the head with a shovel and burying her underneath the patio. Uh, the first one is for anyone who is into the whole Zigbee thing, so that's anyone who uses Samsung Smart Things or IKEA or Philips Hue. Uh, the second possible solution is for anyone who dares wire in a light switch. I've got a few options for doing that um, if you have the testicular fortitude to do so. And the third one is for anyone who has Wi-Fi uh, smart bulbs from, say, Toya Smart Life. Anyone who has that, I have a solution for that too. Let's do it. You might remember a few weeks ago, I told you that this should be your last ever purchase from Philips Hue because, well, they're villains. Um, you can find out why I think that here, but if you want some light bedtime reading, look on Wikipedia for the Phoebus Cartel and you'll find that Philips Hue have been employing underhanded business tactics for the last hundred years. Anyway, uh, time to shatter an illusion. I can't be bothered to tidy my room, I have a green screen. Um, I'm going to show you the worst, most filthiest place on earth where smart home equipment literally goes to die, because that's the room I'm going to use today to demonstrate the Philips Hue switch. Um, and we're going to go to the place where I go if I need to feel ashamed of myself if I've been naughty. This is awful. to it. Let's go into the point where I don't even like come in here anymore. I just kind of open the door and launch smart home equipment in here. <laughs> it's just everywhere. There's this light bulb that we're going to use uh, for today's demonstration, which is connected to that light switch over there. Look at the state. Oh dear. Make sure the switch is in the on position or you're going to regret it later. Disconnect the two screws and then put the new fascia in place and put the longer screws back into the wall. That's uh, that's it, you're done. <laughs> There's nothing else to tell you. Um, you now have a remote control, which is very pretty, and you can take it off and put it back again. Yay! Hi there! I'm here because electricians hate me. Every single time I go and do something like this, I get told, you didn't tell them this, you didn't tell them that. Even though you don't see me in the video switch the electricity off, you should totally switch the electricity off before you take those little screws out just to be on the safe side. Just in case any of those screws happen to touch a cable in the back, you don't want to die. So don't die, switch the electric off first and then do this. I always think the word caveat sounds a bit like the first course at an Italian restaurant, but there are some caveats as to what this thing will work with. It works brilliantly with Philips Hue's hub. Obviously. Uh, it works great with Hubitat. If you've not checked out Hubitat, best Zigbee hub ever made, go and check that out here. Uh, it works great with Homey, but don't buy anything from Homey because they're evil. They're just as bad as Philips Hue for totally unacceptable business practices. So although it works with Homey, I don't recommend you buy Homey. Uh, it works brilliantly with Samsung Smart Things, according to the internet. Uh, my Samsung Smart Things hub is entirely broken. Uh, it does not work at all with IKEA's hub, because IKEA's hub is a big bag of donkey's balls. 
So Paul, why did you say it works with IKEA? Because it does. It works if you uh, program it to an IKEA bulb uh, directly, it'll work that way. But unfortunately, because it doesn't work with IKEA's hub, the IKEA hub then can't control the bulb anymore because the bulb is programmed to this thing. You can, however, use IKEA bulbs on a Philips Hue hub or on a uh, Hubitat hub or on a SmartThings hub, uh, and this thing will control the bulbs via the hub. So you can still use IKEA's bulbs and stuff, but you can't use IKEA's hub. That's the only real caveat. Everything else works pretty great. The next option is to remove smart light bulbs altogether because they cost a fortune. Uh, instead, you want to install some of these. These are smart light switches. Therefore, you can use ordinary bulbs in your ceiling, but control the smart light switch with either a Zigbee hub, such as your smart things, or your Philips Hue, or your Hobbitat, uh, or you could use a Wi-Fi version of these switches and not need a hub at all, and just use a connection from the internet to get She That Should Not Be Named, Google Home, or If This Then That to control these directly. Um, they are brilliant, I have multiple of them, and I have installed them personally loads of times. You can go and watch videos of me installing them if you want, uh, or just get an electrician to do it for probably about 30 quid, it's not going to cost you a lot, and these aren't expensive either. Uh, these in particular are from Zemismarts, and I think they're really, really good. I'll be doing a full review of them later, but they cost this much money, and you should definitely consider some. So if this is a battery-operated wireless gadget for controlling Zigbee devices, what do I do if I want to control things like Toya Smart Life, which is Wi-Fi? It's a completely different solution. This thing is it! Uh, this is a Toya Smart Life moon lamp. I love it! I love my moon lamp. And I can control it using this. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it works. And if I double-click it, it should go off. It went off. And it was faster the second time because it's not always that slow. The reason there is a delay is because this thing is going across the internet to If This Then That, then to Toyo's Smart Life service, and then back to my house again. Uh, this thing also, however, can control things like Philips Hue without having to go across the internet, and therefore is instantaneous to control those things. It also controls Wemo and, like, a whole host of other things. Um, the other great thing about it is you can have one click to control lots of different stuff. Uh, they do a little hub which has an infrared sender in it, and it can control your TV and your set-top box, or a projector. So you could press one button and your screen might roll down and your projector would start up and your lights would dim. It could do everything at just one press. And then if you wanted to order a pizza, you could double press it. It would send a request to If This Then That to order a pizza from Domino's, if you live in America because they haven't done it in the UK, because they stink. Um, but that's it. That is a wicked, wicked option. Um, they're reasonably expensive compared to other things, but totally worth it. Certainly worth having a look at. There was a full review here if you wanted to check out my Flick stuff. Seriously, love these little buttons. The only problem I have with Flick is the price. It is not cheap. Um, there is a competitor from Logitech called the Pop, and the Logitech Pop buttons are a fraction of the cost and cover most of the same services. The only thing is, I haven't tried it. I can't tell you if it's any good. The comments in Amazon seem to suggest it's not quite as reliable as the Flick. Some people saying, I have to press it more than once to get services to work. Some people saying they get the occasional disconnect from the router. I haven't had those problems with Flick. So what I would say is, if you're on a budget, maybe look at the Logitech Pop. If you're not on a budget, get the Flick. The only disadvantage to the flick buttons is you have to plonk them next to your light switch and your missus could still switch the light switch on and off. Um, you could probably get some kind of housing to cover over the switch and then stick the flick on top of the housing. That would be a good idea, but it might involve messing around with capping off wires and whatever else. It's entirely up to you. It's an option and I think it is a good one. Honorary mention then, the Echo Buttons. They're meant for playing stupid games, but check this out. You really know how to push my buttons. <laughs> He's <laughs> so immature. Uh, but it can trigger any routine. I've set that routine up to get her to say, you really know how to press my buttons because I'm a big child. But if you wanted it to switch your lights on, you could press the button, all the lights in your house would come on. 
any routine you can think of, this can trigger it. The only problem is it doesn't have any feature for doing a double tap uh, or a hold, so you've only got press. And because you've only got press, you can only make it turn your lights on. If you want to turn the lights off, you're stuck. Um, aside from that, this is actually a really good idea for lots of different things. Panic buttons, just a, a button by the bed to shut down the whole house. There are lots and lots and lots of cool things we can do with these, and they're very cheap. It's a pack of two for this price. Think about that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That will tell YouTube's algorithms that was good video. More people should see it. Uh, if you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you don't ding the bell, it won't notify you when I upload stuff. Um, these people are my patrons and I love them from the bottom of my heart. They make these videos a possibility. You can come and make that happen at Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal and either way, I will love you forever. Uh, come and hang out with me at all of the social medias and I shall see you next time. Goodbye. Hitting her over the head with a shovel and burying her... Here, here. should be controllable using a Wi-Fi based switch. I'm just jabbering, damn it. Next up, these things. Next up, 